Okay, this is top 50 books of all time. We're going to go through number 16 to number 20. The first one is Advanced Nutrition and Human Metabolism. This is the seventh edition. There's actually an eighth edition. I own both of them. And this is pretty typical of a book I like. I'll put a bunch of post-its in it. I usually end up writing in the back inside cover. You know, I have a bunch of notes in these books and stuff. Um, and I sort of suck up the information and I put it into my other, you know, projects, whatever I'm working on. But what I'm also trying to tell you is every single book in this in this lecture, these are the best ones. I've read each of these cover to cover several times. Um, I got tons of other nutrition and health related books, but these are the best ones. So anyways, why do I like this book? Because it's all about nutrition. Most biochemistry books are really about preparing, you know, medical students to sell drugs. And they're not, they're, they have almost nothing on nutrition. Now, these are still kind of limited. These are almost like I would call that, you know, uh, rural college, you know, how to fatten up animals faster. But they're still, you know, good because they'll talk about absorption. They'll talk about metabolism of dietary fats, carbohydrates, and protein. So this is the best of those books. So when I want to look up old school nutrition stuff, this is the first book I go to. Oh, okay, let me get to my slides here. Okay, so here is the cover of the book. You know, this is the uh, the newer edition. Like I said, there's an eighth edition Gropper. All right, let's go to the next thing. Um, this book, I have it, but I got so many of my books in boxes and stuff. This is about stopping kidney disease. This guy, Lee Hull, is a patient, but he's real smart, and he had kidney failure himself, mild kidney failure, and he cured himself. And he goes through everything you can do. And, of course, we know that. What does a kidney do? 75% of its job is to excrete nitrogen. So you reduce your dietary intake of protein, protein restriction. You make life easier for your kidney. It's more able to catch up on the other nitrogen it has to excrete. The other thing the kidney does, excretes a lot of acid. So you minimize dietary acid. You avoid high-protein foods. Again, they're made out of amino acids, fatty acids. You eat low-fat plant-based diet, Okay. Um, and plant foods are much more alkaline. So anyways, it's a good book, though. Uh, Lee Hull is the author of that one. Okay, here's a book on weight loss, Chef AJ. Chef AJ did a real good job with this book. I'll give her credit. And she also lost the weight. So she's got real-life experience. She teaches people about it. Her concept of caloric density is very good. So I thought this was the best how-to-lose-weight book. Okay, now for estrogen uh, chemicals, this is by far the best book. This is a masterpiece. This is one of the all-time great nutrition books. It's by Anthony Jay. Now, I know a lot of people have seen Anthony Jay and that a person can be brilliant in one way and stupid in another way. So what I'm going to say is Anthony Jay, he does hang around with the Paleo Keto Carnivore Club. And the reason he does that is I think he needs to make money from his um, nutrition business and all that. So I think that, you know, to get a lot of views and to be popular and to get known around the internet, he has to hang around with those guys because he's a PhD biochemist specializing in lipids. He knows a lot about lipids. He knows a lot about estrogen chemistry. He's real smart and he's real funny. I, I actually own other copies of this book. This is my extra copy of it. That's why I don't have post-its or anything in it. It's a brilliant book. It's absolutely brilliant. It's funny. It's clever. So like I'm saying, don't listen to him on anything about nutrition or anything about cholesterol because he's full of crap on those subjects. Also, he's kind of young. He looks to me like he's in his early 40s. When guys are young, they tend to be very stupid about nutrition. They don't get trained in it. And it's only after they start you know, seeing their friends and family members have coronary artery atherosclerotic problems that they start to study it seriously. And then they're like, oh my gosh, it's low-fat vegan. It's the way to go. But that, this is a masterpiece of a book. All doctors should read this book. None of them know. Almost none of them know anything about estrogen. I've talked to a bunch of ob doctors. I've talked to endocrinologists, and they know almost nothing about estrogen chemistry. You'd be surprised. Okay, now here's Neil Brown's, uh, Neil Bernard's book. And Neil Bernard, he wrote a really good book. I'll give him credit for it. This is his best book. It's called The Body in Balance, uh, about your hormones and health and stuff. And I'll give him credit. He just did a great job with it. You know, a lot of times, too, I think he kind of writes to, like, stupid people, like, to an audience. When he talks, he talks as if the audience is stupid. But this book was great. He did a fantastic job of this book. It's a great book, okay? Your body and balance. And this goes through issues about menopause. It goes through issues like, um, you know, thyroid hormone conditions. He talks about some women who reversed their thyroid hormone problems. What are some of the other things? Women who reverse their endometriosis, their PMS, their polycystic ovary syndrome, um, who uh, had better outcomes with cancer, both men and women. 
Uh, how erectile dysfunction can be cured on a low-fat vegan diet. How diabetes type 2 can often be reversed. How low-fat vegans are less likely to go bald. So, you know, I wish I read this book years ago. Anyways, it's a very good book. And then I also had another book in here. Oh, I missed it. Anyways, I'll just show you the book. I'll, I'll magnify the screen. I meant to show this as an honorable mention. This is um, called Endocrine Disruption in Human Health. The author's name is Philippa Darbra. She's a lady who did a lot of the research on figuring out that, for example, deodorant increases the risk of breast cancer in the upper outer quadrant. you got shared lymphatics from the axilla to the upper outer quadrant. Breast cancer used to be 30% in the upper outer quadrant. Now it's 60%. And I think aluminum, plugging up the sweat ducts is the main thing, plus the estrogenic preservatives, things like the parabenzoic acids and whatnot. Parabens, they're called. So anyways, that is uh, top 50 books of all time, books number 16 through 20. Hope that was helpful.